So you all have been active in the comment box section on the video on uh, in which I explain that famous each single beat sentence of Mel's instructions or directions of using the metronome. Um, so 1816, this text. And you guys, um, I appreciate all of your effort uh, going into the comment box and just express what you actually agree with or not and i've seen a lot of you actually not agree but the way in which you disagree is really important uh, and i've seen a lot of really you know um good questions um and to honor all of them i will go over each of your comments in a series of videos that might be the most boring series of videos I've ever made. But this is not about making interesting content and being fast and quick and whatever. This is just of getting down to the uh, the meaning of uh, that this text and what it exactly means. And so in order to do that again, I will um, honor your comments and as much as possible, go over them and answer them. There will be like a repetitive chain of comments because it's only one text and many of you asked the same question or had questions that were related to each other. So but the perspective can be a little bit different so there is no other way to um, get around this than just just go uh, and read every one of your comments and try to answer that that's all i can do i have to say up front and i will do that for each and every video so the series will become even more boring um that and you may not like this what I'm now about to say, but if you think about it, you will, you will, you will agree with me. Many of these comments, if not all of them, are from a biased position. And before you freak out and say, "Wim, you're biased in favor of whole beat," it's not the same thing. And before you freak out that I'm saying it's not the same thing, let me explain what I mean. Um, even people that actually agree with the, the work that we do support it um, still I see still there a sign that a single beat reading historically is still the default position for many for some of you it is very obvious that that's the default position and you want to defend that position with everything you have and it gives interesting discussions and debates, I would say. But even people who support the whole beat uh, concept and see the logic of that, I think for many of us, and for me as well, also, it took me like years even working with Lorenz, not really working with him, but I've told you the story many times. He was he became a friend after the 2009 or 10 Tempo Symposium in uh, Opfingen. We met and we got along with each other. He was a clavichord player. I had a clavichord there. He played on my clavichord in Germany. And so he came over um, every year just to have a little bit of a holiday. And we had walks and we, we played music together. But I didn't agree with what he said about the slow movements. And I realized only later it's because I was still considering the single beat position to be the default position, even though I was advocating for slower tempi according to a kind of variable whole beat system according to, to Talsma. Anyways, my point being is, if you read a text like that, it is very important to see and to acknowledge first what are the possible metronome readings. So you cannot go into to an historical text and say like, consciously or unconsciously say um, this text has to prove um, solidly the point of whole beat because that's not fair if everything and certainly in a text written in the 19th century and certainly a text of this level because we will see many of you actually by debunking my point pointed also and primarily to the inconsistencies of that text it's not the most clear metronome description the only thing is when you read that and everything that's in the text need to be crystal clear whole beat and if not it's by default back to, to single beat well then there will be very few whole beat texts in the 19th century and if i would do the same for single beat there would be almost almost non-single beat texts in the 19th century either so 
you can say, yeah, but you're biased. You read everything from a whole bit perspective. It's not entirely true. What I'm doing, I'm coming from a context in which whole bit is the only metronome reading that makes sense. And so from a perspective of whole beat, so there you can say I'm a little biased, but from that perspective of whole beat, that text should hold its ground. It should not fall apart. Because when it falls apart, we have a problem on the whole bit side. When that text can provide some clues or where some inconsistencies in the text can actually only be this, um, understood from a whole bit perspective, which implies terminology, and I will come back a lot of to that in, the, in these videos, well then, it's a whole bit text. It supports all the other things. You cannot isolate the thing. Yeah. I can go over it from a single bit perspective, and we did that. Then the text has a lot of inconsistencies. I will show that as well. So from a single bit perspective, this text is, let's say, let's say if if I would be a teacher in school and someone like I, it's an anonymous text. Eh? Many people say it's a Melzel's text. We don't know that, and most probably it's not. But we don't know that. Uh, but when I would be a a school teacher and a student came with uh, with an article article like that. I doubt if he would pass the test. Eh? So if that text that's already very shady to start with needs to prove whole bit like as sharp as a knife, it's not going to happen. So when you balance the two readings and you apply it to the text or you to two perspectives, you sit on the chair of single beat, you sit on the chair of whole beat, and you read the text, then in that case, whole beat wins hands down. Because if single beat was really the perspective, then the text makes no sense at all. That's our point. I'm not saying that this text is a 100% crystal clear description of whole beat. The only thing I'm saying is if you read it from the whole beat perspective, there is a way and it's not so hard to make sense out of the text. And that's actually an already too long introduction, but it's very in important, guys. You remember that you cannot do research when you first, first you define the problem. That's the main thing. It's so, so, such an easy thing to research. We have so many metronome marks. You can say, oh, but they're all possible, but really a few of them. I mean, I saw another guy saying recently, like, yeah, only the Hamaklavir Sonata is problematic. Well, then you're out of discussion. I mean, and some people say, Wim, don't waste your time with these people. I am not wasting my time with you. I mean, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing this for you. And if you have questions, there is, my father always said to me, there is no stupid question. There is only a stupid answer. And that's, that's the thing. I'm here. I wouldn't say to serve you. I mean, that sounds so, uh, it's so overused these days in online entrepreneurship, but I'm here together with you to find what ultimately could be the truth. And if we come to a point where we say, well, I have no problems with metronome marks, oh, then we have, don't have a common ground. And you might live on, you might want to ask yourself if you don't live on another planet than planet Earth, because we have a lot of problematic metronome marks and no tem temporibato is not going to save you. The way temporibato now is, is described is just utter nonsense. If you compare it to what in the 19th century was, 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 you know, was the practice. I'm totally digressing, but you get my point. You'll have to be, if you want to participate in research like this, you'll have to acknowledge that there is first a problem and then you go to step two, what are the possible solutions? If you don't say, well, whole bit, no. No, there is nothing like that, in spite of the fact that we have a tradition of centuries where the tactus and the schlag is clearly described as a double move. I will come back in one of these uh, answers, maybe here, I don't know, where we start with, an, uh, with, with, with an, uh, a definition of an 1829 encyclopedia of the London um, encyclopedia or, or something like that. I mean, it's like 50,000 volumes, that kind of... 1829 Grove Dictionary, you, you might say, where even time, and it's, it's an article on beating time, a time is described as the motion up and down of the hand. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the terminology is everything. So, but if you say there is no whole beat, there was never whole beat, it's nonsense, it doesn't exist, well, then you're stuck with your problem. 
And then my question is indeed, there's a piano we're going to play. So I'm only saying this to you to make you aware of the fact that you have to acknowledge the problem and you have to take the risk. You have to have the courage to at least think theoretically what are the possible metronome readings and whole beat and I, I'm sorry guys but whole beat is just a valid metronome reading it's just today physicians read the pendulum still like that still like that so this biased position I'm not I'm not accusing anyone eh? don't don't take my words of, out of context but it's the most difficult exercise one has to do leave your the history and your taste and your preoccupation your, and your, your, your pre-thoughts, your a priori aside and then go into the matter. You enter a neutral zone there. And you can say like, listen, listen, when you're defending Holbeat so much and so hard, so you're, uh, you're obviously biased. I have a track record of maybe 20 years already now dealing with this seriously since I met Lorenz and very seriously since since five years. So for me, I'm not here anymore. Like I'm not knowing what to do, but it's narrowing, of course. And then we come to the Melzel directions. And from this huge amount of information, starting with the metronome problem, that's the definition where everything starts from. If we hadn't that, everything was more complex. Even though today, with the state of the research we're doing now, it would be still be pretty obvious. But you get my point. You cannot say, like, we are not going to accept it no matter what. And when you do that, you wouldn't be better than this Oxford guy that, that goes in there and say, I have to find a solution. I have to explain the unexplainable. And you see where it ends. That's easy on the comment box. But if, you, if, you, if you're about to write the entries for growth, um, a dictionary music of musical instruments and of the uh, Oxford online dictionary, you have to come up with some, with some solid points. And this leads to crazy positions like we need a societal shift in order. I mean, it's unbelievable. But it's easy to say on, on the comment box and to just pick something and say, but this doesn't make sense. And I'm going to show that to you in this series, hopefully. Let's start with uh, our friend Olaf. He is very active eh? on, uh, on the channel. I don't, I don't mind. People sometimes say, Wim blocks everyone. Well, yeah, go on my channel and read comments. It's not particularly everybody that's on my channel commenting that's uh, who is agreeing with me yeah it's just guys you have to be just behave like an adult like all of us doing he says dear mr winters uh, it sounds stupid but i can appreciate that eh? i sometimes see people like throwing shit at me and they say whim okay i mean really let's that's it is like how you have to i mean maybe i'm conservative but i i like dear mr winters and i would say dear mr schrunda um i must ask you an honest question you're clearly an intelligent person thank you i don't think that of myself often but i'm it's happy i'm happy to read that but i know i mean just joking does your interpretation of males really make sense to you in four four three four two four the rot shoot whenever possible beat quarter notes this is a single beat. And you can't say that beat means two ticks because then your whole beat example, allegro, metronome mark, half note, the metronome beats, quarter notes becomes quadruple beat. And with the logic of your whole beat example, you get quadruple beat for a presto, whole note, the metronome still beats quarter notes. I don't want to offend you, but I generally find it hard to understand that you believe in this. Well, you're not defending me here, it's absolutely not. Um, if I take the text here and I see your point, your point is like he says here, you, um, the author says, whenever you have an adagio, I leave it up to the discretion of, uh, of, the, of the composer. Let's see what he exactly writes. Go to the first page, I should have them next to each other actually, it would be easier. The composer is best able to judge from the nature of his movement whether to mark its time by minims. Uh, by the way, time here is not time signature. I will come back to that. I mean, time is used in different ways. And I will not digress, but guys, if, if the author would have said like, are you interested in when I write this text, it's five o'clock in the afternoon, then 
the time in that sentence wouldn't mean time signature either like time here is definitely tempo um, anyways so the um, the nature of his movement might be two markets by minims, crotches, quavers, and so on. Generally speaking, it will be found that in adagio it's most convenient to mark the time on the metronome by quavers, in andantes by crotchets. I have to always zoom out to able to page here. I don't know why. Allegros by minims and in prestos by whole bars. And so if I understand all of's point uh, well, Mr. Strinder. I, I mean, I'm I'm just joking on this, uh, but I don't mind when you say whim and you just ask an, a genuine question. But sometimes it's weird to see people throw really shit at you and just address you with your first name as if we know each other. And if we are on friendly foot, then you can name me whim. But anyone here in the comment box, it's fine, whim. I would really appreciate, guys, to know all of your names. I simply hate the anonymity of uh, of comments so really it's for me un understandable why you would want to be part of um a community like this finding the historical truth and not like all of us here just just let me know who you are it makes the conversation so much easier um and it's it's like you know you you you, you put your foot feet on the both feet on the ground like all of like that's my point i'm all of stranger and that's what i believe in that's why i think you're wrong in this and that's why i feel um, that i have to ask no problems with that um so but his point is like uh when you mark um an adagio in eighth notes and andanting and quarter notes and allegro by half notes presto by whole notes well then further goes the uh, the text like in four four three four and two four time the rod should whenever possible beat one crotchet well the the point here is actually already that the text is very inconsistent in that sense that as i see it whenever the 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 rod should uh, beat crotchets in a whole beat system you would be in the minimum example in the half note example in a single beat system you would be in the andante example because in the andante he says the composer generally it's like common practice we have exceptions it's the 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 the, 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 the discretion of the composer but in, generally speaking andante's quarter note allegro's half note so but whenever possible, the rod should beat quarter notes. So already there, my question would be single beat or whole beat, regardless, he should have given the author uh, the what the metronome should beat in each of those cases. When, when you have an eighth note in Adagio, when you have a crotchet in, or a quarter note in Andante, when you have a half note in Allegro, when you have a whole note in uh, Presto, what is the metronome actually beating then? It's not always the quarter note, right? Because also in single beat, when Presto is marked with a whole bar, what are we talking about with crotchets? What all of us are actually pointing to is there is only one possibility here. So there, there is an inconsistency. It's actually, it, there is a bridge there. Is there a gap? There is a gap. There should, be have, there should have been a sentence in between saying like, in the case of, and then comes the interesting discussion. In the case of, when it was single beat, when it did this text would be single beat, in the case of an andante, the rotch should, uh, should beat whenever possible the crotchets. Or... In case this text would be whole beat, the author should have said, like, um, when we take the example of the Allegro, where we mark the time with, with half notes, then the rod should take each or indicate each quarter note. So there is already something in this text. The question also of all of us, you cannot have two meanings of beat. And that's absolutely not true. We still today have two meanings of beat. It can mean full swing, it can mean a single swing. It's without a discussion and those um, crossover meanings are used within the same text. That's always the case. Even if you go back to texts explaining mandural notation like 17th century text, there you have the double uh, terminology. It's not so hard to understand. Schlag means, what, what does Schlag mean? It's one beat or it's the up and down. It's described as both. You can say that's not true, but that's definitely true. 
I could make a video on that. It's, it would require some research. Or, I mean, the texts are written in the book about that, but there's no discussion that that is actually the case. And it's very easy even to, um, to show that from within this text here. So we came to this kind of error or just, uh, you know, how do you say that? Uh, the, um, the author should have explained what he is actually saying, like in, whenever possible, the metronome beats uh, the crotchets in 4-4 four, four time, yes. But what if the time is marked with the whole note and so on? Okay. But then he continues, and that's the inconsistency where whole beat suddenly comes forward saying, this being premised, so this being premised means the conditions I've explained now, He's going to talk about an Allegro setting, a metronome mark. So the Allegro is generally marked by half notes. The metronome, 4-4 um, four, four time is going to talk about whenever possible beats one, every beat uh, correlates with one crotchet. Then he says, when in this present, according to the present system, the composer would call that movement an Allegro. Let the weight by way of trial, trial be placed against number 80 and two of three bars of the movement be played to a certain weather. At that number, each beat falls in with the degree of quickness desired for one minimum or two crotchets. So, in other words, you have four for time. Signature here. You want to label it the movement as allegro. So he suggests eight, uh, he suggests 80 for the as a tempo, and Allegro is marked in general with half notes. He says every beat that we read it correctly, um, each beat falls in with the degree of quickness desired for one minimum. So each beat equals one minimum or two crotchets. But how do you? Compare that with the previous premise, where in 4-4 four, four time, the rod should, whenever possible, beat every crotchet. Suddenly, it are two crotchets. The only way of reading this text without any compromises if it is to accept that beat here, what the Germans would call Schläge, so the ticks also here, each single beat or tick here, the metronome beats the quarter notes in a 4-4 four, four time signature where the composer marks the allegros with half notes so when the when the listen to me it's not easy eh? but it's simple at the same time so whenever the composer marks a movement with allegro half note 80 the metronome each beat falls in with the degree of quickness desired for one minimum while the metronome beats the quarter notes. I, I, I don't know if you still are with me. And you can say, like, this is a stretch, this is a mistake. Basically, when, when people in the single beat, you know, world talk about this text, they either just ignore it, or they label this as a misprint, as an error, but it isn't. It's only inconsistent when you start from a single beat perspective. When you start from a whole beat perspective, this is exactly what it is. So when Olaf writes like, okay, but the metronome in 4-4 four, four time that beats, that beats every one time every crotchet, of course, that's a single beat explanation, exact. But the single beat system is just a subdivision of a whole beat system. Both are linked together. The only thing is how is the metronome mark written? What is, what is meant by that metronome mark? And so here, half note 80, every beat gives the quickness desired for each half note when the metronome ticks are aligned with the quarter notes is perfectly consistent with the whole beat reading. It's the definition of that. And so there is, from a whole beat perspective, 
no problem from a single bit perspective that this doesn't make any sense you cannot have both even with the different meaning of beat the different meaning of beat leads to whole beat that's the entire point so again and, and very quickly because it's not really the question we come back to that time if here as an it has been well understood that in this, as in every case, each single beat or tick forms a part of the intended time. That's not possible in single beat because he says that prestos I mark by whole bar. If time here is really bar measure, then he makes a mistake. We cannot have the discursis marked with dotted half note. That's a whole bar. We cannot have allegros or allegri vaches marked of prestos with whole notes. It's not possible because then not each single tick can be part of that because the metronome mark is the bar. You see, again, an inconsistency from a single beat perspective, but a perfectly possible in a whole beat view, you know? So, guys, this is, this is, I told you, this is, these are going to be the most boring videos you can imagine, but it's, um, I mean, I'm not writing a script to answer you. I'm going, I'm taking you really to the text itself, hopefully to explain to you uh, uh, and, and give you a little bit of, uh, of background here. Um, just to give you that quote, I have it here from the 1829 the london encyclopedia volume 3 i think it's page, page 714 or something each motion down and up is called a time or measure so whenever people say this is absolutely time signature no definition of time is each motion down and up i mean it's cool right it's really cool and that's the that's the whole thing i mean People say there is no right or wrong. Well, of course, there is a right and wrong. Both cannot be to, right together. I mean, both cannot be right. They will still be run wrong. But when you just go and just for five minutes, for five minutes, I, I knew uh, when I was younger, a great guy was actually a, a Talsma adept. I mean, he, he published a lot of things in Talsma and we lost contact. I mean, he was growing older and it's Clemens von Gleich, by the way. He was great, 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 great guy with a lot of humor. And he said to me, Wim, a long time ago, I mean, we're talking about early 90s. Huh? Uh, Jesus, I'm getting old. Um, he said to me, whatever you do in your life, I give you one advice every day. Take 10 minutes, sit on the chair, and just imagine that everything you believe in or you think is right is wrong. And actually, I'm doing that. You should do it too. It's, it's illuminating. It's really liberating. And then you will see the logic of the, double, of the whole bit of the WBMP. And it's, it's mind-blowing. Once you accept that logic you will first see that you were extremely biased i'm not talking to all of here i mean in general and to me as well eh? i mean I've, I've i've gone through it and you know that to a journey through a journey but but then suddenly comes the logic of the end and of course we have here and there little things to solve and there's a lot more that i haven't covered on the channel and even if i would have covered everything that would be in the book there would be still a lot of to be researched i mean guys this is this is like reversing the entire uh, view on the musical history just by the metronome marks you cannot expect two people to solve everything well we will have given a lot of hints and clues and directions but it's liberating eh? a text like this suddenly makes sense though it's not written very well it's not written with the digital mind of today that's for sure okay Jesus, I wanted to have these, these, these response videos uh, done in five or six minutes. Oh, can any one of you teach me how to be short? <laughs> and I know I get a lot of comments, even emails like, Wim, don't worry, we watch all your videos from the beginning till end. I mean, I, I believe that. Eh? But still, it would be also for me less time consuming to just be able to answer you in six minutes instead of 30, right? <laughs> okay, no, I'm having a good time. It's also good for me because, you know, I go back to the text, I reflect on that and I answer you and if I miss something, there is another comment box waiting for you. Guys, 
Thanks for being here, watching, um, and being here to find the truth together. Very much appreciated. And we see each other soon again. Bye.